Hey hey and welcome to my series covering dead Hoi4 mods. Today we're playing Dreams of a White Russian Victory. When I first started playing the game it was pretty important and a lot of people liked it but it hasn't been updated in over two years at this point or maybe about exactly two years. It has a very simple premise. White Russia won obviously it's kind of in the title. Other countries like Ukraine and Belarus both exist on the map. All three are non-aligned and so the tree is pretty interesting interesting. It's like a multi-tiered tree here of different political paths where we have at the top three different democracy paths, then two different imperial paths, two different communist paths, and two different fascist paths. There's also the Anastasia the Peasant path, which I think is the biggest path by itself and it's kind of separated here. Anastasia Romanov was saved from assassination. I don't know how to get this path, but I guess we can try to go down it. I won't be terribly disappointed if we can't figure out it though. Everybody talks about that path. To this day, I still hear people tell me about it. Start off with two usable civilian factories. Or I guess five. We're creating an agency, so seven. But that's still terrible. Also, this is weird. The dictator trait gives you plus 25% political power, but the military dictator trait gives you minus 10% political power gain. That is weird. Also, I don't know exactly why this mod is dead specifically. The last two dead mods had at least some explanation for why it's dead, but I assume the reason this mod is dead is for similar reasons. The devs are probably just too busy or working on other projects. A very difficult thing to update a Hoi 4 mod to is No Step Back. So since this is pre-No Step Back, the entire leader character system is different and it has to be changed to the new version, so every single character has to be updated. With such a small mod like this, it probably isn't that difficult, but it's still something that'll take an hour or two, and I assume many more hours to update all the other issues. Uh, okay, so the Bolsheviks are targeting some random peasant woman for potential assassination, and I can assume who that is, so since we want to go down this path potentially, we will find the random woman and protect her. Also, in this mod, Finland has a big focus tree, Ukraine has a big focus tree. I don't think Belarus or Mongolia do. Still very nice for Finland and Ukraine. A nice Ukraine anarchy path. Maybe sometimes we should play multiple of the paths in these dead mods, but I don't know how that would exactly work in the series for sure, but we could consider doing something like that. There are a lot of good paths in some of these dead mods. For reference, for people who are maybe newer to the game, this entire mod was made before the Soviets had any alt history paths, so it was a very big deal for there, there to be a mod where there were so many paths. Even though it is an alt history where the white Russians won, it also serves as just a normal Russia in Hoi 4 where you can do alt history paths. And that might be part of the reason why this this was never updated to No Step Back, considering that No Step Back changed Russia a lot, so I assume there are a ton of problems that have to be overcome to make this compatible. Now we get to have a very fun party, Tsarkon, where we get to decide what's going to happen in the future. It's going to be a great party where imperialists from around the world will be invited. Oh, and speaking of the anarchists, it's funny that I mention them and then they go down that path. Okay, and we're going to end the Congress early to confirm the women's identity identity. She has an uncanny resemblance to Anastasia Romanov. And now we unlock this tree. Very easy, actually. I was worried that it was going to be some difficult EAW styled secret path where I would have to look for an hour through the game files to figure out how to unlock it. But no, that's easy enough. You just have to click one event that's kind of ambiguous and makes you lose political power. A fun fact, usually when events do nothing good and only make you lose something, they lose lead to good things in the future. In the Second Republic of Finland, Finland also leaves the faction, and here the coronation of Tsarina Anastasia Romanov. Democracy becomes the ruling party. It looks like she has a terrible politically unknown trait. But there we go. Now we probably have the only female leader out of all the countries in the world. I don't think any others do in vanilla Hoi 4 around this time. There are potential ones, but yeah, none here. Also, wait, does Sweden get a focus tree? No, they just get a different leader. That's weird. We have an 
attribute skills system too. So she's kind of a blank template and we can give her an epithet. She can be the great, the pragmatic, the beloved, the good, the wise, the prudent, the conquer, and the terrible. Uh, I would love to give her the terrible. That'd be very funny, but I think we'll go for something like the beloved instead or the great. And we obviously need a prime minister too, considering we're democratic. It would be kind of weird to have just a monarch if we're democratic. So we will choose Kerensky, our favorite guy who gets assassinated at the start of Kaiserreich, I think. Maybe he just dies. I'm pretty sure he gets assassinated. And then we'll go down reconciliation to become best friends with the communists. Well, not really. We're just reconciling with them. We have to do one of these really fast though to remove that terrible politically unknown trait. And before we continue with our political tree, I'm going to go down the economy tree a little bit, at least just to remove some of the worst of the economy and ruins effect and get a few factories. He'll also hurry and grab this free research slot too. Spending 35 days to get a new one permanently will add up over time. And then I guess we can go on to free trade also for free with this focus. Free trade is very good, especially compared to closed economy. Also, I reached out to the developer of the mod and the reason that it's dead is a little bit more complicated than they just got bored with it. They were actually turning this into an entire overhaul. I believe this is the third version of the mod and they were planning for the fourth to actually change the entire scenario to better reflect what would happen elsewhere in the world if white Russia won the Russian Civil War. But then not no step back but by blood alone the most recent update kind of broke things and now there's not really a desire to continue it though there's a chance that it gets updated in the future we'll see. Well probably not this gets updated but the next version releases. And so we can also unify with Belarus, Ukraine, and Finland. Finland. It looks like for each of them we have three options. A plebiscite is a waste of imperial time. We can just declare war. We can have a rigged election, Russia's specialty of course, or a fair democratic one, which we'll do today. It's a giant stability expense. And I honestly would rather just pay the 200 political power to annex them than the 10% stability to annex them. But we will LARP as the good guys today. We don't get cores on them yet, which is mildly annoying. But once we get through the focus tree, I think we get cores at the end. So I guess the options are different. With Finland, peace and compromise wins out. We just give them 10% consumer goods to make Finland very beautiful and they join us. Okay, and after spending a lot of political power, we can now federalize the Russian Empire and get cores on everything. Okay, now we have this really cursed referendum system where we can just start holding referendums everywhere in random places. Then they just join us without any sort of conflict. I feel like no nation would actually agree to this entire system. Everybody just really loves Anastasia Romanov and is willing to join the Russian Empire. Now we can do the most cursed timeline thing ever and become best friends and make out with America. The US will join our faction and then we will make the Russo-American research collaboration. And the United States has amazing research modifiers and starts off with five research slots. So having them in a research agreement with us will be amazing. Okay, and there was no appeasement this time around. Neville Chamberlain didn't live up to his leader trait. This means Germany will probably lose early and then we won't do anything, I guess. I don't even know who's going to like be the bad guy if Germany loses too fast. I guess we can fight Japan and save China from Japan. We won't like conquer anything besides maybe Manchuria, but we won't really conquer anything. Yay, now this is the best timeline, of course. I think we can even buy a lot. Alaska now if we want to. And all these focuses increase different traits, like this one increases experience, this one here increases all of them. To get any of these titles, authority needs to be at least one. So we have to do one authoritarian thing. I guess what we will do is nobility reform. So instead of focusing on business or citizens, we focus on the nobles. Oh, and this weird thing happened. I don't think this is really a thing that happens in the game anymore, but this used to happen all the time where the German Republic would appear out of nowhere when Germany declared war early. Also as Russia we have our own Pentagon. I guess we are in an alliance with America so we can have the twin Pentagons. Wow and that was really easy. See this is why appeasement was bad. My source hoi for. Anyways it looks like Italy joined the co-prosperity sphere so we will have at least something to do. We can defend this Balkan Entente from Italy and Japan and 
help China too, or I guess China's in the allies, so um, China probably has all the help they want. Okay, and here we go. We are going to probably win this pretty fast. The United States already joined the war too, so they will be very helpful. And I notice this doesn't work as often in newer versions of Hoi 4, but in old versions I always did this as Russia, where you just land in Japan, randomly can get naval supremacy against them despite having a much worse navy, and all their divisions are on the continent. So if we act fast enough, we can actually take all of their ports before they even get divisions over here. And I don't know what happened. Oh, I guess Italy had already capitulated and I didn't even realize it. So yeah, this is over. So Britain really wanted to puppet Austria and South Tyrol, but Besides that, we now have Italy as a puppet state, Albania as a puppet state, Britain also wanted a tiny Manchu puppet state, Korea is just pure independent, and Japan is our puppet state. Spreading democracy everywhere, I guess. And Austria voted to join Germany. Great. That works. The borders look better now. I guess time to take territory from Poland. For border reasons, it'll look better if we take these two states, but I'll only take these two, okay? We're not even taking them, we're just holding plebiscites there. China still exists here, but they're not China. Kai Shek just leads his own warlord faction in Beijing. It's guaranteed by the British for some reason, but it was never in the Allies. It was, I guess, just made independent, but not a puppet. I, I don't know how this exists. So I missed this bug. There's a bug where we'll randomly get this event every month or so. It's a really weird bug that has something to do with owning Manchuria. Having Japan as a puppet maybe? I, I don't know. But it's broken and we'll just keep getting that event over and over again. Okay, well there is another conflict, but this isn't going to be a difficult one. Mexico decided to invade a ton of countries, including the United States. Though in return for our help with Mexico, we will purchase Alaska. Anyways, that's the end of the playthrough of this dead mod. If there are any other other dead mods you want to see me play, let me know. I can roll back as far as you want. If there's something ancient, I'll see you all next time.